Fellow gardeners, there's nothing quite as disheartening as watching your beautiful pepper plants succumb to disease just when you're anticipating that first harvest. Whether you're growing sweet bell peppers or fiery habaneros, fungal diseases can turn your garden dreams into a nightmare faster than you can say blossom and rot. But here's the good news. With the right knowledge and natural approach, you can protect your pepper plants without reaching for harsh chemicals. Today, we're diving deep into the five most common fungal threats that target pepper plants, and I'm going to share everything you need to know to spot them early, treat them naturally, and prevent them from returning. This isn't just about saving the season's crop, it's about building a sustainable, healthy garden ecosystem that thrives year after year. Understanding the Enemy, Why Peppers Are Fungal Magnets Before we tackle each disease individually, let's understand why peppers are particularly susceptible to fungal problems. Pepper plants love warm, humid conditions. Unfortunately, so do most plant pathogens. Their dense foliage can trap moisture, creating perfect breeding grounds for fungi. Additionally, pepper plants have relatively tender stems and leaves compared to some other vegetables, making them easier targets for opportunistic pathogens. The key to successful natural management lies in understanding that prevention is always better than cure. By creating an environment that favors your plants over the pathogens, you're already winning half the battle. Phytophthora blight, caused by the water mold Phytophthora capsici, is arguably the most devastating fungal disease affecting pepper plants. This pathogen is particularly sneaky because it can attack your plants at any stage of growth, from seedlings to mature plants, heavy with fruit. The first signs of Phytophthora blight often appear as dark, water-soaked lesions on the stems, particularly near the soil line. These lesions can girdle the entire stem, causing what's known as crown rot. As the disease progresses, you'll notice leaves developing irregular dark spots that seem to appear overnight. The fruit symptoms are equally dramatic. Infected peppers develop soft, water-soaked areas that quickly turn into a rotting mess. What makes this disease particularly challenging is its ability to spread through water. After a heavy rain or overwatering session, you might wake up to find multiple plants showing symptoms simultaneously. The pathogen literally swims through soil water, seeking out new host plants. So, when it comes to natural treatment and prevention, the most effective approach for managing Phytophthora blight really centers around water management and soil health. Start by making sure your pepper beds have excellent drainage. Raised beds, honestly, work wonderfully for this purpose. If you're growing in containers, just make sure they have adequate drainage holes and use a well-draining potting mix. Crop rotation is absolutely crucial with this disease. Never plant peppers, tomatoes, or eggplants in the same location year after year. The pathogen can survive in soil for several years, so, you know, a three- to four-year rotation cycle is ideal. During off-seasons, plant cover crops like rye or clover to improve soil structure and suppress pathogen populations. For immediate treatment of infected plants, you should remove them entirely. Don't compost them. The soil around infected plants should be treated with beneficial microorganisms. A drench made from compost tea or effective microorganisms, sometimes called EM, can help restore soil balance and suppress pathogen activity. Powdery mildew, sometimes called the white blanket disease, might look less dramatic than other fungal diseases, but don't let its appearance fool you. This disease, primarily caused by Leviula taurica on peppers, can significantly reduce your plant's ability to photosynthesize, leading to stunted growth and poor fruit production. Spotting the signs of powdery mildew is, honestly, pretty straightforward. Powdery mildew typically starts as small white powdery spots on the undersides of leaves. Unlike many fungal diseases that prefer wet conditions, powdery mildew actually thrives in dry conditions with high humidity. Think of those muggy summer days when the air feels thick but no rain falls. As the disease progresses, the white coating spreads across leaf surfaces. And you might notice the upper leaf surfaces developing yellow or brown patches. Leaves may curl upward, and in severe cases they'll drop off entirely. The beauty of managing powdery mildew naturally lies in environmental manipulation. This fungus hates good air circulation, 
so proper plant spacing is your first line of defense. When transplanting peppers, resist the urge to pack them closely together. Each plant should have enough space for air to flow freely around it. Baking soda sprays have been a gardener's ally against powdery mildew for generations, and for good reason. Mix one tablespoon of baking soda with one quart of water and a few drops of liquid soap. This helps it stick to the leaves. Spray this solution on affected plants in the early morning or evening, avoiding the heat of the day. The alkaline environment created by baking soda makes it difficult for the fungus to establish itself. Milk sprays are another incredibly effective natural treatment. Mix one part milk with nine parts water and spray weekly on susceptible plants. The proteins in milk have antifungal properties, and this method has shown remarkable success in research trials. Neem oil, applied according to package directions, also provides excellent control while being completely natural. Anthracnose, caused by various Colletotrichum species, is the disease that, well, really breaks gardeners' hearts. You can have perfectly healthy plants all season long, only to watch your beautiful peppers develop these ugly sunken lesions just as they're reaching maturity. Anthracnose symptoms on pepper fruits are honestly pretty unmistakable. Circular sunken lesions with dark centers and light-colored edges. These spots often show up right as fruits are beginning to ripen and unfortunately they can quickly expand to cover large portions of the pepper. On leaves, you'll notice similar circular spots that might have a target-like appearance with those concentric rings. You know, the frustrating thing about anthracnose is that it can actually remain dormant in what looks like healthy fruit only to show up later during storage or as the fruit ripens. This kind of latent infection means you might harvest peppers that seem absolutely perfect only to find them rotting on your kitchen counter just a few days later. So, let's talk about natural control methods. Honestly, cultural practices really form the backbone of anthracnose management. The pathogen actually overwinters in plant debris, so a thorough fall cleanup is essential. Be sure to remove all pepper plant residue from your garden and either burn it or dispose of it in municipal waste. Never compost any infected material. Water management is also super important in preventing anthracnose. Since the spores spread through water splash, drip irrigation or soaker hoses are far preferable to overhead sprinklers. But if you do have to use overhead watering, try to do it early in the morning so your plants have plenty of time to dry before evening. Copper-based fungicides that are approved for organic use can be pretty effective against anthracnose, but timing is absolutely critical. Applications should start when fruits are still small and then continue at regular intervals throughout the growing season. However, just be a bit cautious with copper applications in areas with high humidity, since phytotoxicity can sometimes occur. Managing fungal diseases on pepper plants naturally isn't just about avoiding chemicals, it's really about creating a garden ecosystem that thrives in balance. By understanding these five major threats and putting the natural management strategies we've talked about into practice, you're honestly well on your way to growing healthy, productive pepper plants that will reward you with abundant harvests. Remember, gardening is a journey of continuous learning. Each season brings new challenges and new opportunities to refine your approach. So, don't be discouraged by setbacks. They're just learning opportunities that will make you a better gardener. If you found this guide helpful, Please subscribe to Smart Garden for more in-depth gardening content, and share this video with any fellow gardeners who might benefit from these natural disease management strategies. Together we can create healthier gardens and a more sustainable approach to growing the food we love. Happy gardening!